video how kidney doctors from the University of Texas and from the Cleveland Clinic found a way to get their kidney patients out of CKD in six months and to cut their creatinine in half. Here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and today I have reviewed the work of some of the most prestigious kidney doctors from the US to share with you the most effective way of cutting your creatinine in half. Guys, it's finally time the medical world gives up their old ways of treating CKD for something that actually works. And guess what? They are using a natural, holistic approach now. Yes, I have been saying that CKD can be treated in ways that do not involve dialysis for more than a decade. And finally, someone started to listen. And as I was expecting, when doctors and nephrologists start to focus on actually helping the patients instead of just getting them to start dialysis as soon as possible, the results can be dramatic. In the documents they published, none of their 288 CKD patients, many of which were in stage 4 and 5, ended up in dialysis. You're gonna like it. And this is a terrific result because dialysis is often started when the patient enters stage 5, alright? And yet, this doctor said to their stage 5 patients, no, you don't need dialysis, just follow this test and you will be alright. Okay, but now you may ask, how can we benefit from their findings? What should we do to make sure our creatinine is going down? Well, there are four steps every single kidney disease patient must take if their goal is avoid ending up in dialysis. And don't miss our number one for today because that's going to be the key for patients in stage four and five to avoid dialysis. Before that, let's start with step one, which is, of course, the diet. There is no improving your GFR and creatinine numbers without the correct diet. No doubt about it. And the doctors from the Cleveland Clinic have found a way to make your renal diet even more effective. How effective, you may ask? Well, one of their patients reversed their kidney disease thanks to this diet, and her creatinine was cut in half. Creatinine went from 2.0 to 1.0 mg per dl, as we can see, which is amazing. Keep in mind that 2.0 is either stage 3b or stage 4 for a woman, so her kidney function was severely reduced before the intervention. But now, with the creatinine of 1.0 mg per dl, her kidney function is in the normal range again. They had to completely discharge her from the clinic because she didn't really need a kidney doctor anymore at that point. And guys, if you think this is amazing, consider clicking the like button and sharing this video on social media as well, so more people will get the good news. And now you may ask, what is the trick? How did they achieve this result? Let's take a look. So according to the nephrologists from the Cleveland Clinic, if your goal is cutting your creatinine in half, what you want to do is focusing on restoring your gut mycobacterial flora. As you probably already know, your gut is home to a complex ecosystem of bacteria that's essential in order to survive. These healthy bacteria convert our food into energy, produce essential nutrients, and they also stop the bad bacteria from, you know, taking their place and slowly poisoning the kidneys by releasing uremic toxins. Protecting these healthy bacteria is, of course, a way to improve your kidney health. Now, this is not really something new. I mean, I have been recommending every single CKD patient to eat more fiber and to take a probiotic supplement for ages now. What really shocked me is the result this nephrologist from the Cleveland Clinic is getting with a rather simple dietary intervention. Yeah, creatinine cut in half, no more CKD. 
What's maybe even more interesting is that these doctors have developed an incredible way to get fast results in terms of lowered creatinine levels. Let's take a look. So, the way these nephrologists are getting their patients to improve is by proposing four dietary changes that have to be implemented gradually. First step is, as you can imagine, cutting protein. I have never seen in my life a single CKD patient stage 3 or above improving without drastically cutting protein intake. So yeah, that's always gonna be the first step. Then the second step will be replacing these unhealthy foods with something that's actually beneficial for the gut. Beans, vegetables, and nuts. These are foods I always recommend because that's where most of the fiber we get every day is. The more beans, vegetables, and nuts you eat, the better. Just make sure you are not getting too much of protein from these foods, all right? Prefer, for example, green beans to common beans. Then the third step is adding foods that actually increase the amount of healthy bacteria in your gut. And we are talking about probiotic rich foods here. And one of the best foods is, in my opinion, kimchi. Most people, when they think about probiotic rich foods, usually think about yogurt, which being dairy, I do not recommend, by the way. Fortunately, kimchi is much better than yogurt. It has more strain of probiotics and it doesn't have animal protein nor phosphorus in it. It's also incredibly tasty and it's made from fermented cabbage, so even more health benefits. Now guys, the last recommendation from the nephrologists came from the Cleveland Clinic will shock you. So in order to further improve your gut health, what you want to do is periodically fast to rest your gut. Okay, I don't know if this piece of advice shocked you, but it shocked me for sure. In my experience, fasting works well as a way to, you know, cut your caloric intake. Great for diabetes and weight loss. But does it actually work to rest the gut? Well, actually, some studies are supporting this theory, but they are mostly done on animals. There is not too much scientific literature to support fasting as a way to improve gut health, so I won't really recommend it to you for now. For now, what I can recommend intermittent fasting for is diabetes and weight loss. And yet, these doctors got some incredible results with this method. I mean, getting creatinine levels from 2.0 to 1.0 is not something to sneeze at. So my question is, have you ever practiced intermittent fasting? Did it help with your gut? Let me know down in the comment section. And guys, when it comes to the gut health, I've personally seen great results with supplements both when it comes to probiotics and prebiotics as well. So consider adding both healthy foods and supplements to your regimen if your goal is cutting your creatinine in half. And by the way, the reason why this approach works is because it literally turns your gut into your third kidney. And if you want to know more about how to use your gut, as a third kidney, I recently made a video about this. It's up here and also down in the description. Up next, our next entry today comes from the work of one of the greatest of all time, Dr. Joseph Pizzorno. Dr. Pizzorno is the founder of Bastyr University and one of the most respected naturopaths in the world. And I've decided to include him in this video because his work can help solve one of the biggest issues CKD patients are facing nephrotoxins. According to Dr. Pizzorno, if your goal is to cut your creatinine in half, you must aggressively reduce your exposure to nephrotoxins. So question, what are nephrotoxins and how do we reduce exposure? Very simply put, nephrotoxins are substances that are toxic to the kidneys. These include lipopolysaccharides from a leaky gut, toxins from smoking, and organic pollutants such as glyphosates. These are all very dangerous. Now, we have already seen how important it is to keep our gut in great shape. And I bet that you guys don't smoke. So what I want to focus on now are nephrotoxins from heavy metals and organic pollutants. Organic pollutants are chemical substances that persist in the environment, bioaccumulate through the food web, and that are especially dangerous for the kidneys of people with CKD. Because your kidneys cannot filter them properly. 
Glyphosate, the herbicide commercially known as Roundup, is a clear example of this issue. Despite being a known carcinogenic ban in several countries, this herbicide is still used in the US and you may end up in contact with these dangerous nephrotoxins from many foods. But despite what one may think it's more likely to eat foods containing this herbicide when you eat processed foods rather than raw fruit and veggies. Granola, instant oats, morning cereals, and snack bars seem to be the worst vendors. And since this herbicide is mostly used on orange, almond, and soybean cultivations, it may be a good idea to only eat organic when it comes to these foods. Now, there is also a natural supplement that can help detoxifying this dangerous substance from the kidneys. This is something Dr. Pizorno has prescribed to many of his patients with amazing results. Ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo is a large tree with fan-shaped leaves and its leaves are what is used to make supplements. It is often used to improve blood flow and this use alone should make it worth considering. But the main benefit you will get from ginkgo is another. Ginkgo improves kidney function because it has the ability to protect against numerous mitochondrial toxins. In particular, this natural remedy seems to be especially effective against glyphosate. And yes, this means that for some patients, ginkgo supplements may produce a rapid improvement in kidney function. And if you want to try ginkgo, it can be purchased in extract form. It seems to be most effective when taken in several doses throughout the day. That total 120 to 240 milligrams. Consult your doctor before taking it. However, ginkgo is a very safe natural remedy. Okay guys, before we move on to our number two for today, which is going to be crucial, especially for patients in the advanced stages that want to avoid dialysis, I want to say thanks to all of the new members of the channel. We have five new members and they are Jennifer Ang, Survivor, This Other Dave White, Brother Deluxe, and Winnie Makareg. I hope I got all the names right. And guys, thank you very much for your support. It really means a lot to me. For those of you that don't know about this new future of the channel, there is a little join button you can see right below my videos. What it does is giving your comments top priority to get a reply from me. You also get a shout out as well and you will also be able to help me create more of the content you like. So thank you very much. Now guys, let's take a look for a moment at the incredible work the nephrologists from the University of Texas are doing. They were able to achieve the amazing result of getting all their patients to avoid dialysis for the whole duration of the case study, six months as we can see. So as I was saying, no one of the patients of this study conducted by the University of Texas started dialysis and 31 of these patients were in stage 5, which is absolutely amazing. So how did they do it, you may ask? Well, this was possible mainly because they discovered a little known fact about advanced stage kidney disease. Fact, a huge number of CKD patients end up in dialysis due to medical errors. Because you see, when the kidneys of a patient start to lose their filtering ability, a lot of medications and procedures that were safe become extremely dangerous. This includes very common prescriptions such as NSAIDs and proton pump inhibitors, and also the use of imaging tests with contrast. Not to mention the prescription of antibiotics and antivirals. And yes, just by completely avoiding these kind of medical errors that are incredibly frequent, the patients were able to avoid dialysis. In fact, as you can see, the procedure these doctors used to get their patients out of renal failure was as simple as prescribing the most commonly used diabetes and blood pressure medications. Plus, teaching the patients how to interact with their doctors in order to, you know, get these doctors to avoid making dangerous mistakes. I mean, who could have imagined that if you get your doctor not to destroy your kidneys, you will be able to avoid dialysis for much longer? Yeah, we need some nephrologist for that. So in short, if you can get your doctor not to prescribe you kidney killer tests and medications, you will be way less likely to end up in dialysis. And this is what these nephrologists just proved to the world. 
Now guys, it's also worth mentioning that avoiding medications such as NSAIDs and imaging tests with contrast is only half of the equation when it comes to prescriptions that can destroy your kidneys. Because you see, medical interactions are even more dangerous as they are harder to identify and they can do much more damage. So now the question is, how can you prevent your doctor from making a mistake that sends you in dialysis? Well, that's our number one for today. Number one is do your homework. Collect your health data. So the big find that saved all those patients from Texas from dialysis is not the fact that some medications can kill your kidneys. Everyone knew that already. Their big discovery is a way to get doctors to stop prescribing those medications. So here's exactly what this study tells you to do if you want to avoid dialysis. First of all, each CKD patient should bring all of their medications bottled to each visit with their doctor. They say that this is a way for the patient to discuss what, how, and why they are taking them and to learn more about these medications. But there is more about that, of course. You see, in my experience, the reason why some healthcare professionals end up overprescribing or prescribing dangerous medications is because they don't know enough about their patients. They don't have a complete medical history. They don't know or don't take the time to check what other medications the patient is taking, which is very dangerous. As I was saying, if a healthcare professional gets a new patient, one of the first thing they must check is what medications they are taking. Then they can prescribe anything else. But this is not always the case, unfortunately. In fact, if your goal is avoiding falling victim of a medical error, it is also recommended to bring your health data with you. You know, your last blood analysis, all the info from your own personal health journal, stuff like that. And guys, trust me when I say that this can make a huge difference also because you are getting informed. You have the control of your situation and you know what you are doing and why. But you may have noticed that I glance over what medications are actually dangerous. And that's not because most doctors should know this. I mean, at least I hope. No, it's because I went a lot more in depth about what medications are dangerous and how to avoid them. In my recent video up here and also down in the description if you want to know more. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.